welcome to your biocast. I'm Mrs. Jaeger and I'll be your guide. As always, take detailed notes and don't forget to bring them to class the next day. Take some time right now to get your binder together, a pen, and get ready to learn more about biology. Okay, today you're going to um, learn about the characteristics of living things. This is biocast number three. We classify things as either living, non-living, or previously living, which basically means dead. There we go. Um, living things are based on a universal genetic code called DNA. Um, DNA is a molecule that stores all of the heredity information in animals. And and other plants and organisms. Um, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. You will need to know that, so make sure you write that one down. DNA is like a blueprint um, in the same way that buildings have a blueprint. Everything about you, your hair color, your, um, your height, your personality even, is stored in your DNA. And the same DNA is found in every cell of your body. The same goes for any living organism. The second characteristic of living things um, is that living things grow and develop. Everything starts out as a single cell, basically a fertilized egg that divides multiple times until it becomes a complex organism. Cells do something called differentiation, or they differentiate, which means that as your cells reproduce, they turn into different cells in your body. So in other words, um, you started out as an egg and sperm that met. The sperm fertilized the egg. And then from that one cell, all the cells in your body differentiated to form your nerve cells, your skin cells, your muscle cells, um, all of your cells in your body, heart tissue, everything. Oh, the example that you see on your slide right there, the picture, is a seedling from a tomato plant. Um, so that is what where your tomatoes come from. That's how those plants start out. And they start out as a seed. The third characteristic of living things is that they respond to their environment. Um, organisms detect and respond to something called stimuli. Stimuli is the plural word for stimulus. And there's another word in red that's your vocab word. A stimulus is just a signal to which an organism responds. So if you look at the picture on the left side, that is a school of fish. It's a great example for how organisms respond to their environment. Um, what they're doing right now is staying together for safety. They may be responding to a, um, a predator, which could be a stimulus, so they're staying together. They're probably also responding to um, the stimulus of food in the water. They're, they're going to areas of of higher food concentration. The fourth characteristic, um, all living things reproduce. There are two types of reproduction. Um, most plants and animals engage in something called sexual reproduction. That's when cells from two parents um, join together to become the first cell of a new organism. Okay, so It might seem weird that plants undergo sexual reproduction, but they do produce um, sperm, which are basically pollen. Uh, anyone who gets allergies has inhaled some plant sperm, basically. So, um, The other type of, or of reproduction that organisms undergo is called asexual. Asexual means non-sexual reproduction. And bacteria and really simple organisms like amoebas undergo um, asexual reproduction. And it's basically when a single organism reproduces or produces an offspring that is identical to itself. Kind of like cloning. The picture on the lower side of the right side of the screen is of a bacteria. You can kind of tell because it has that tail. But bacteria really like to clone themselves and that's how they reproduce. Sexual reproduction results in organisms with different DNA than the parents. Asexual reproduction uh, results in organisms with identical DNA. The fifth characteristic is that living things maintain a stable internal environment. 
This stable internal environment is called homeostasis. Um, you do this every day. Your body maintains a temperature of around 98.6 degrees. Um, that is its homeostasis temperature. So even if it's 70 degrees in the room or 50 degrees or freezing, your body will still work very hard to maintain that homeostasis, to maintain that stable internal environment. The picture on the right side of your screen kind of looks like an orange. Um, it's actually the, the skin of a poison dart frog. It's a poisonous frog that lives in the tropical rainforest. Um, it secretes a toxin, a poison, through its skin. And the most poisonous dart frog has enough poison to kill six people. So it's very, uh, very poisonous. Now, the reason why it secretes this, these toxins is because it eats something that has toxin in it. So it starts storing that toxin in its body. But to maintain a homeostasis, it's, it's got to get rid of some of that toxin. So it secretes it from its pores. You do this with salt. If you've ever um, gone for a really long run or worked out really hard, you might notice that you get a little salt on your skin. Uh, that's your body maintaining homeostasis. If you'd ever like to go to the restroom or get a drink of water, you better ask me to maintain your homeostasis. The sixth characteristic of living things is that they obtain and use energy. Everything that's living must take in energy to grow and reproduce. Your body uses energy all the time, and if you didn't take in energy, um, you would die. While you're copying down that uh, definition of metabolism, I'm going to take in a little energy myself, carrots. Go ahead and write that down. Metabolism. Carrots are good for you. Okay, your metabolism, you probably heard that term before because people say they have a high or low metabolism. Basically, your metabolism is the combination of all the chemical reactions in your body that create molecules and break down molecules. So, um, getting the energy from food requires metabolism. You'll see the bird on the right side that's a kingfisher from Africa, and it's eating a fish. That's a great example of how organisms take in energy. You're probably wondering right now about plants. Plants are able to make their own food. We have to eat food. Plants make their own food. But they do take in energy. They just take it from the sun. The seventh characteristic of living things is that they are all made up of cells. The cell is the smallest unit considered fully alive. Or the smallest unit of living things. Okay. Um, anything that's alive is made up of at least one or more cells. Cells grow, they respond, they reproduce, they multiply, um, and they're, they can be highly complex and specialized. Even though they're very tiny, uh, they're made up of tiny, tiny little organelles that do um, different functions, do different jobs inside of the cell. We're going to learn more about cells later. That cell you see on the right side of your screen is a plant cell. Notice the color, it's green, plants are green, plant cells are green. Also, it's shape, it's kind of like a square, and plant cells are generally square. Your final characteristic of living things is that they evolve. Evolution is just change over time. Um, there's lots of evidence for evolution. Uh, you'll find it in fossils. You can find it by looking at, at different um, skulls, which is comparative anatomy. And you can also look at DNA take the DNA of different organisms and figure out uh, how they're related. Evolution points to a common uh, origin of living things, of life, that happened about 3.5 billion years ago. That's a long time ago. So the first living thing on our planet, we think, appeared about 3.5 billion years ago. Which is about a billion years after the Earth was formed. I really love this picture on the right hand side. Um, what you're looking at is uh, a little girl at a museum standing next to the skull of a hominid, basically a, an early ancestor of human beings. So she's kind of standing there next to one of her ancestors. I want you in your notes to write down five examples of living things. I also want you to write down in, uh, five examples of non-living things. And that's it for today. Um, I will see you for BioCast 4. Have a great day.